help me make a positive difference when I'm on the job. God, help me make a loving difference in my home. God, make me a lasting difference among my friends. God, make me a difference maker wherever I go. Welcome back to this study on the Old Testament book of Daniel, where God preserves for us some heart-pounding stories of people who became difference makers due to their relationship with the living God. And today, God teaches us through three guys with funny names who came to Babylon the same way that Daniel did. Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar, the king, conquered their hometown of Jerusalem, uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, captured these three guys along with Daniel and other elite young professionals and brought them back to Babylon to be in his uh, palace court. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego became superstars in Nebuchadnezzar's palace, which sounds great, except that Nebuchadnezzar is a megalomaniac who is obsessed with getting people to worship him and his godlike authority, all of which led Nebuchadnezzar to construct a 90-foot gold statue. Now, to give you a little scale on that, uh, the roof above us right now is 30 feet above where I'm standing right now. So this gold statue would soar up three times higher than our roof. Uh, this statue was an ancient skyscraper uh, designed to induce fear and bring people to their knees in complete conformity. Uh, we're not told whose face was on the statue because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the statue is not the real worship focus. The focus of worship was the king, Nebuchadnezzar. The statue was just a prop to squeeze people into total conformity to Nebuchadnezzar's will, who uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who unveiled this statue behind him and then said, I command you to bow before me and my statue, and anyone who does not do what I command will be thrown into my blazing furnace of fire. So Nebuchadnezzar created this theatrical moment, complete with a gold monster, a huge orchestra uh, to, pay, to play the soundtrack, and death threats. And the Bible says that when the orchestra began, the multitude that was uh, gathered before Nebuchadnezzar's throne and the statue all raced each other to hit the ground first before uh, the throne and statue. Uh, but then suddenly, the uh, orchestra started to <laughs> kind of cough and sputter uh, into, a, uh, into a conclusion of their uh, song because uh, the musicians looked up and were distracted because they realized that not everyone was bowing before the statue in what could only be considered intense bravery or foolishness. Uh, there were three guys who stood up and would not bow before the king and the statue. And how do you think Nebuchadnezzar reacts when his theatrical moment is ruined? How do you think he reacts when he discovers that three guys are standing up and drawing all the attention away from him? Three guys who are now the focus of awe because they will not conform and they dare to be different. How do you think the king reacts? Well, this is what it says in Daniel chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the music play, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. 
But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your mighty hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So now, let's pause and reflect on what these three guys teach about what it means to be one of God's difference makers. God preserves the story of these three guys to show us what difference makers look like. And the first lesson that God teaches through these three guys is that difference makers are not people pleasers. Through the story of this blazing furnace, God shows me I will never be a difference maker until I decide at my core whether I am a people pleaser or a God pleaser. Uh, you know what made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego difference makers? Long before the statue was made, long before the furnace was warmed, these three guys decided that no matter what, they would follow God and not gallop poles. That no matter what, they would follow the will of God and not the whims of people. And more than anything else, this, this decision made them dangerous to the tyranny of evil. When you read the whole interaction between uh, these three guys and Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter three, you'll see that Nebuchadnezzar's rage was a fear reaction of a shaken king. Nothing terrifies Nebuchadnezzar more than three guys who he could not terrify. These guys scared him to death because he realized he couldn't manipulate them with peer pressure. He couldn't manipulate them with 90 feet of gold. He could not even manipulate them with death threats, all of which made these three guys more powerful than him, the most powerful man on earth. How about you? Did you know that there is a group of people in this world that make the devil nervous? This is a group of people who cannot be manipulated by people. How about you? Are you part of that group? Are, are you one of those who has made a decision that makes you dangerous to the tyranny of evil? Or are you a harmless people pleaser? You'll never be one of God's difference makers if you are enslaved by public opinion or you are captured and chained by a desire to fit in. Students, if you want to be a difference maker in your school, you need to decide before the music plays. You need to decide before they unveil the golden keg and tell you that you must bow before the party god and get drunk or high like everybody else. If you want to be a difference maker in your workplace, you need to decide before the music plays that you will not bow before gold, but that you serve a higher authority, an, an infinitely higher authority than your boss or a paycheck. If you want to be a difference maker, like these three guys, you must make the decision like they did. You must decide that you will be a difference maker who cannot be manipulated by people because you are not a people pleaser first. You are first a God pleaser. The second lesson that God teaches me through these three guys is that difference makers will not bow to fear. If I wanna be a difference maker, I need to uh, deal with my personal fears. Why? Because these three guys demonstrate the truth. The truth is that what holds me back from making a difference in this world is not my external circumstances. What holds me back are my internal fears. 
Fear comes from one place. Fear comes from my focus on me and my definite inabilities. Fearlessness comes when I choose to stop focusing on my definite inabilities and instead focus on God's infinite abilities. Do you see how these three guys focus on God's ability? Nebuchadnezzar says, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Uh, this is what they call a rhetorical question. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was not expecting an answer. A rhetorical question, you know, it's, it's kind of like what parents say uh, to a toddler. Example of a rhetorical question is, hey, Buster, do you want a spanking? No parent is expecting a kid to say, eh, I was planning on watching Teletubbies, but uh, yes, a good wallop would actually teach me more. Bring it on. No, no, no parent would ever expect that. In the same way, Nebuchadnezzar was shocked when these three guys uh, respond to his rhetorical question, saying, yes, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, our God is able to uh, rescue us from the blazing furnace, which means that we are not in your hands, we are in God's hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are fearless difference makers because they are not focused on their definite inabilities. They are focused on God's infinite abilities. How about you? You'll never make any difference anywhere if you are held back by your fears. But God releases you to your difference-making potential whenever you step out and follow him beyond your fears. I have a friend here at Black Rock named uh, Debbie. And Debbie uh, heard the challenge of the first message in this uh, Difference Maker series, and Debbie determined to be a difference maker that week uh, whenever she sensed God prompting her. And whatever she sensed God prompting her to do, she would step beyond her fear and do it. Uh, and sure enough, a few days later, on her way to the bank, uh, she saw a two town employees doing tree work with one policeman redirecting traffic around the two guys doing tree work. And the weather was damp and miserable, and she just looked at these three guys and thought, how bone-chilling it must be out there. And so, sure enough, she sensed God saying something. And so after the bank, she uh, stopped and got three big cups of hot chocolate and some donuts and drove up to these three guys. But then came the fear. Uh, as she was driving up, she was full of self-doubt. Uh, what would they think? Uh, how are they gonna react? Was this the one cop in the world who didn't like donuts? Uh, <laughs> but she put the fear aside and got out of the car and gave them the uh, hot cocoa and the food. And they reacted with some shock. They reacted with some suspicion. And then they said, uh, thanks, but... Why are you doing this? And Debbie said, well, that she appreciated their work uh, for the town and uh, thought a little hot cocoa would make a difference. And then she got back in the car and did one of these, uh, I wondered if God had prompted her to do this. And uh, Debbie, you know, was moved beyond her fear, but had certain doubts that God was actually in it. A couple of days later, her doubts disappeared. Why? Because, well, on another very cold day, uh, by coincidence, uh, who was assigned to do tree work right outside her front door? Yeah, those three guys. And so she walked out of her front door with some more hot cocoa, <laughs> saying, hey, who wants some more hot cocoa? And uh, she had those warm baked muffins. And turns out the cops like muffins too. Uh, and it turns out that this second meeting was the difference maker. This is where the conversation uh, turned to something that made a difference. And to Debbie, it was a kind of confirmation that God always meets his people when they step out and follow him beyond their fears. God will meet you and make a difference out of you if you will just step beyond your fear, which I'm wondering what that means for you this week. Uh, will you follow God beyond your fear and invite a coworker here to church? Uh, will you step out and make peace 
in what is now a broken relationship? Will you step out and greet a new neighbor on your block? When you step out beyond your fear, God meets you there and opens a door for difference making, which leads to the final lesson that God teaches through these three guys. God teaches me that difference makers find a friend in the furnace. Find a friend in the fire. And here we need to go back to what those three guys said to Nebuchadnezzar because I only gave you the first part about how they would uh, believed God's ability uh, to spare them. But there is also a second part. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, our God is able to rescue us from the fire. That's the first part. Now here comes the second part. But even if he does not, we want you to know, king, that we will never bow before your statue of gold. Together, these two parts form a belief statement, a doctrinal statement that is one of the most profound in all of Scripture. I'm talking about their two-part belief statement that we believe that God is able to spare us from suffering. But even if he does not, he is still worthy of our complete love and devotion if he does not spare us from suffering. Difference makers take a stand on both parts of this belief statement. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed that God had the ability to keep them from the fire. But even if he did not, they love him in the fire. And of course, that's what happened. God did not spare these three guys from the fire, but instead, they went believing into the fire. As we read in Daniel chapter three, verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and commanded some of the strongest soldiers to tie them up and throw them into the blazing furnace. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the fire. I'm sure they did not want to go in the fire. I'm sure these three guys prayed that God would spare them from the furnace, and they trusted God even when he did not spare them. I'm sure that they prayed uh, that God would spare their hometown Jerusalem from Nebuchadnezzar, but they trusted God even when God did not spare Jerusalem. And I'm sure they prayed that God would spare them from being carried off as captives into Babylon, but they trusted God even when God did not. They trusted God even when he did not spare them from suffering. And if I want to be a difference maker, then I must learn to trust God even when he does not spare me from pain. I must trust God in the fire. How about you? You believe that God is able to resurrect your dead marriage, and well, you should, because God does marriage miracles. But will you trust him even if he does not? You believe that God can heal your body. You believe that God can release you from temptation. You believe that God can solve your biggest problem, and well, you should. But will you trust him even if he does not spare you from the pain? When the music plays, will you stand with him even if he does not spare you from the pain? When the music plays, will you stand up with him even if he does not spare you? If he does not spare you from the furnace, will you still meet him in the fire? Some of you are in the fire right now. Some of you have prayed, and your prayers have seemingly not been answered. You've been tied up and thrown into the furnace. Well, I'm here to say you're not alone. I'm here to say that if you look around you in the fire, you will find a friend in the fire. 
We left off with these three guys being tied up and thrown into the furnace. Now, hear the conclusion, uh, starting in verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, were there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God. Come out, come here. So the three guys came out of the fire and they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces and their houses turned into piles of rubble for no other god can save in this way because they trusted in God even when God did not spare them from the furnace. These three guys found a friend in the fire. Who was that friend? The fourth man. We were already introduced to him in our first message in this series. In Nebuchadnezzar's dream, this fourth man is described as a rock who smashes the clay feet of human kingdoms and sets up God's kingdom that starts off small but then grows and grows to fill the whole earth. This rock, this fourth man is Jesus, the son of God. And isn't it amazing how Nebuchadnezzar unknowingly declares the idea Identity of this secret fourth man. I see one who looks like the son of God. Because we have the full story in scripture, we can look in the rear view mirror and we can see Jesus in the furnace. And just make sure you notice a few parts of this story. First, notice that the fourth man is in the fire. Jesus is no stranger to pain. Jesus is no Stranger to the furnace of suffering. Whatever fire you are thrown in, he is there. Remember, Jesus was in the garden who said to the Father, Father, I know you are able to take this cup of the cross from me, but not my will, but yours be done. And Jesus entered into the furnace of the cross for you. Because Jesus knows the loneliness of the furnace. He meets you there as your friend in the fire. But also, next notice how the emphasis is now these three guys were thrown into the fire, tied up in bonds. But then notice how they're seen walking around free with the fourth man. Because when Jesus meets you in the furnace, the only thing that burns on you are your bonds. Notice that when you meet Jesus in the furnace, the fire sets you free. Then notice how Nebuchadnezzar sat up with attention when he saw the fourth man. Nebuchadnezzar was unmoved by these three and their faith and their courage. Uh, but when the king saw the friendship between these three and the fourth man, that's what made him set, set up, stand up and take notice. That when the king saw the friendship with the fourth man, that is what brought him to his declaration of faith in God. It was the relationship with the fourth man in the fire that was the difference maker. You see, I get it backwards. I think that the way to be a difference maker is to be the strong one who comes in and helps people when they're weak or in trouble. Not always true. Often, my biggest opportunity to be a difference maker is when I am the one in the furnace. Often my biggest opportunity is to be a difference maker where the watching world sees the fourth man with me and how I am free through this friend in the fire. Like Nebuchadnezzar, most people in this world are not impressed by your, by my courageous stands or my belief statements. But like Nebuchadnezzar, everyone sits up in awe when they see me with the fourth man in the fire. Everyone sits up and takes notice when they see me totally free and walking around in friendship with a, my fourth man friend in the furnace. Difference makers are not manipulated by people pleasing. 
Difference makers will not bow to fear. Difference makers find a friend in the fire. If you're on your way to the furnace, or if you're already in the fire, don't miss your opportunity to meet the fourth man and follow him to make a difference. We want to thank you for watching and listening to our sermons online, and we hope that uh, you will be inspired to live more like Jesus through these. Please check out blackrock.org for more information about our church. Know that you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, and also uh, know that you can give uh, to BlackRock and to our ministry through PushPay, through our mobile app, and on our website. Your uh, donations and your support of our ministry allows us to have uh, these videos online and for us to impact our community.